how many of your friends are perfect? Sometimes we use the word perfect to mean really good, but originally, of course, it meant zero flaws. How many of your friends have zero flaws? I don't know anybody who has that except Jesus, and yet I'm friends with a whole bunch of people not named Jesus. I'm friends with people flaws and all. And the Bible is full of stories about imperfect friends. There's stories like David and Jonathan. It's an amazing story. It's a true account. You can read all about it in 1 Samuel. I'll give you the short version. Uh, David is going to be the king of ancient Israel, but he's friends with the son of a different king, King Saul. Uh, king Saul wants to kill young David. That doesn't stop Jonathan and David from being the best of friends. They share hobbies. They share stories and secrets. They care about each other. And they support each other, even though they had major flaws. Jesus' disciples were famous for messing up, putting their foot in their mouth, and saying all sorts of things that were inappropriate. And yet, they lived together. They laughed together. They learned together from Jesus. They supported one another. Those people in the Bible knew what you know about friendship. A person doesn't have to be perfect for you to be friends with them. So I'm going to tell you about the most surprising story of friendship that I've read in the Bible. There was a, one of the friends who had a bad day. People were being unkind to him. And so he was reviewing all the ways that he's not perfect. He was all in his own head. It was bad. And then his friend came along and did what friends always do. He said, hey, why don't you tell me what's on your mind? Tell me what's got you down. And then he listened. And when he was done listening, he pointed his dear friend toward the God who loved him. The Bible doesn't even tell us the name of those friends. It calls one of them, my soul. And it calls the other one, me. He befriended himself. Psalm 42 verse 5 says, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. That's how you'd talk to a friend, isn't it? Is that how you talk to yourself? I have trouble with that. I can forgive the flaws in my friends, and I work really hard not to hold it against them. And yet, I have a hard time forgiving myself for my imperfections. Isn't it kind of crazy that we call ourselves stupid or ugly or lazy when we would never say that to a dear friend? Of course, you know that you're not perfect and I know that I'm not perfect and yet all of our other friends are also imperfect. When I'm having a really hard time uh, befriending myself, sometimes my negative self-talk, my unkindness will leak out of my brain and come out of my mouth and my family will hear it. And that's when my wife does one of the kindest things she ever does for me. She says, hey, you be nice to my husband. She's right. We need to be kind to ourselves. If ever you find yourself running down a list of your imperfections in some unhealthy way, just remember what Jesus would say. Hey, be kind to my friend. Be kind to yourself. <laughs>